Ultimate Iron Man mode demands sacrifices. With such limited storage capacity, endgame ultimates reach a certain point where we just can't hang on to every good item that we get. Clever UIM storage methods aside, we can hold roughly two inventories worth of items on us at any given time. How one chooses to spend that space differs from person to person, but I've always been interested in the idea of trying to accumulate as much wealth as possible on a single UIM account. In progressing through the UIM endgame myself, I want to see exactly how high I can push my looting bag value. And with the newly released Tombs of a Masket raid, what better way than trying to snag some high value purples from the tombs? I'm Zort, and this is my journey to obtain RuneScape's most valuable items without banking. Ho <laughs> ho it is raids release day, my friends, and it is early right now. I got up at 4 a.m., got myself a little energy drink here, and Wings and I are going to do some duo runs. Um, I am incredibly tired. My brain isn't working yet, so uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get myself settled here, and we'll do some runs. Watch us get the first purple, Dude. the staff, whatever it's called. A purple today would be amazing. <laughs> Whew. All right. Zort from the future here. Not going to lie, the first few raids did not go so well, but I'm going to put up with the embarrassment and show you guys anyway. Do you think you can hide behind a jug on the waves too? I'm going to oh die if I don't. Oh God. oh, God. I might be dead. I just I'm died. <laughs> okay. The falling rocks. We're going to stand here. What about the little and jackals? Is he dead? These big boulders. Yep, he's dead. And he should drop you a big banana. Do I with that what you want. Not... <laughs> Dude, this is literally morning's end part two. Come on. Oh we are both white. I don't know what's happening. I also don't know what's happening. Oh. Uh, uh, two hours later. All right. Let's try something. I'm going to run counterclockwise. You run clockwise. Try this once. Like you said, spamming it. Maybe that'll work. What if I stand on this one? Try not to stand Come on, on the center die. tile. Stand oh, on. he's dead. He's dead. Okay. Sweet. So I think we Is just... he dead? Is he dead? Attack, run, attack, run. There we go. Okay, was that it? Or All right. It okay. All right, let's see. Hey. Uh, I got... Did you get one of the crystals? Oh, yeah. Open up that chest. Chest of runes. Oh, 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 oh. from entry mode. Okay, dude. If you use a glory and go to El Karid in yeah. the center of El Karid, an NPC named Selim, S E L I M. Selim, I hardly know him. <laughs> I yeah, tur I turned my OBS back on just for that joke. Oh no! Got my breach of the scarab here, and I think I need to talk to Mister Selim in order to buy my Karis partisan back. Let me see if I can do that. Can you sell me another Karis? Uh, okay, dagger or partisan. We want to go for the partisan. Should be 60k. Yes, sir. I will take one. And then I believe what I can do is just use my breach of the scarab on the partisan. Very cool. There we go. Karis and partisan of breaching. And there's not a lot of information out there right now, but what I'm assuming this is going to do is be a big DPS buff to the Scarab boss in raids three. I've went ahead and bagged my dragon warhammer in lieu of using this. So Wings and I are going to send another run and hopefully this will be coming in very handy. Not a lot of completions have happened so far. You can see that Wings and I are currently one for one in one of the first 4k entry level completions. Um, there's only 24 global normal completions, which is crazy. And that tells me that the invocations must make this a lot more difficult because you can see 6,500 attempts for just 24 normal completions. That's a pretty bad ratio. And then currently zero expert raids. That is also mind blowing, but I'm sure that Wooks' team will be the first to pull it out. Dude, to like 130. So the UIM next to me troll and my CC has the shadow. Yeah. What did one I say? KC, one kill count. I, I told you. you. Everyone who has a staff, I swear to God, they got it at one kill count. Right. Yep. Oh my God. I logged out. You logged out? I was AFK logged out. Yep. Or I six houred one of the two. Perfect. Just keep doing what I got you're it. doing. Oh my did God. You? Don't go in yet. Dude, my heart rate right now <laughs> is so high. 
Oh. That's okay. We're still at oh, 130, yeah, 130, so maybe a good potential still. No purple. <laughs> Deathless. That was the first normal raid for loot-wise. Our first actual chance to get loot. Because our raid is 150. It didn't drop because of the time. So, what is it? Oh, you're just running I'm right just to it. Okay. Going in. Seeding to it. <gasps> White. Damn. Taking a short break from TOA to do a little bit of TOA prep. So, let me explain. I have my anti venom stack right here. And I think that I could actually bag the anti venoms and just run to Castle Wars and grab the super combat that spawns up in the ruins north of there. So, I would save myself a bag slot. But in order to do that, I need to get rid of my Draymon staff that I have to continuously rebuy in my house so that I can use the fairy ring to go over to TOA. I know, solving a big intricate puzzle here. Um, but the long and short of it is that I have got three tasks left on my Lumberj and Draenor diary. Once I clear the elite level of that, I no longer need my Draymon staff or my Lunar staff in order to use the fairy rings. So I'm going to try to knock out my last three tasks. One of those is smithing an Addy Plate, which I can do with a plus three boost. The next one and uh, the subsequent one are both rune crafting tasks. So I'm going to invest a couple hours in knocking those out, and then that should in turn save me one inventory slot for TOA. My power going in and out right now. Let's go ahead and try to get this boost. Let me sip this spicy stew, smithing 88. There we go and plate body quickly and this should be an elite task completed first of the final two tasks completed and i guess that gives me all of the elites however i can't claim that yet because i need to finish the hards first so let me go grab the cosmic rune task and then i will be able to claim my rewards and the Cosmic's done. And you know what, just for good measure, I realized that in the Varrock Diary, there's an elite task to do kind of the same thing, but for Earth Runes. So while I'm Death Banked, I'm, or Death Piled rather, I'm just gonna knock that task out also. Got myself some lamps and diary item upgrades, but the big one here is actually just being able to use the fairy rings without needing a Draymon staff or Lunar staff. And that should get me all situated so that I can go back to TOA. The thread on the first Deathless solo. The first solo actually ended up being Deathless, but uh, yeah, got ourselves the thread here. This is actually one of the best rewards that a UIM can get. It upgrades the rune pouch by one more slot. And uh, that's an extra inventory space if you need four rune stacks. So I am super stoked about this one. Let's go get this made. I believe all I have to do now that I have a needle is use the thread on the rune pouch. Let's go ahead and augment the rune pouch. And there it is, the Divine Rune Pouch, awesome. So this can now store four rune stacks instead of three. I don't currently have a fourth that I need to store in there, but this is gonna come in handy later. Gonna bag these and then work my way back to TOA for some more raids. A nice, clean, deathless 185 solo raid. Let's see what our standard loot is. That is... God, that's awful. I've stacked myself 10K minnows here and I'm going to go ahead and trade them in for some raw sharks right now. I think that should get me, uh, well, let's see. All right, 250 sharks, that's pretty good. And I'm actually gonna take those to TOA and do a little bit of testing to see if I can do a shark and prayer pot only run. TOA is great, but it does slowly chip away at the restore stack, and since restores are so hard to come by on a UIM, I want to see if I can avoid using them completely, saving the bruise as well. Haha! -ha! All right, an elite task completed in the Kandarin area, which bumps me up to 43 out of 44. I can actually complete quite a few of these tasks that are remaining, I just CBA, but... We will be working towards completing the full diary set in the near future. Although I was doing some 200 plus level solo raids, I've decided to go with a minimalist setup because I was using a lot of brews and restores. So I've refactored my invocations, my inventory and gear setup, and I've kind of optimized to be able to do quick raids that won't use a whole lot of my gear. You know what? If I can't get a purple, Snapdragon seeds are the next best thing. Dude, 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 holy sh**. I was so confused when I saw that collection log pop up. I was like, what gem did I get? What is new? There's metamorphosis on this thing? Oh, this is cool.
I almost forgot you can talk to the pets, so let's uh, first let's examine and see what this says. A tiny automaton imbued with a trace of Elodinus's power. Okay, and let's talk to it. So how are you doing? We are faithful to the guidance of Elodinus. Her water sustains us and brings life to the lifeless. We grow with her and she with us. For as long as we remember her, we will never be alone. Okay, never mind. <laughs> That's great. Real quick, if you guys are enjoying today's episode, I'd really appreciate a quick like on the video, a sub if you want more old school content in your sub box to watch, and if you want to go the extra mile, a comment also helps to get my video into the algorithm. Thank you so much for helping to support me. Very exciting. My first purple. Probably the best thing that I could grab is the Fang, followed by maybe the Ward, since I have the Arcane Spirit Shield, the Staff would be huge. The light bearer would be great for these raids and Masori would be great for everywhere the range. So really can't go wrong. Let me open this up and let's see what we get. Pause champ. Pause champ. What did I get? Oh, I got the ward. Oh my gosh, okay. No, Mr. Bank, please, you will not see me at Corp. I already have the Arcane Spirit Shield. Uh, super stoked. Oh my gosh, let's go make this into the ward. Also, the homies in the clan informing me that I will be the second Ultimate Iron Man to have the upgraded ward, which is pretty cool. And if I'm not mistaken, I was the first Ultimate Iron Man to get the pet from here. So... Yeah, not quite making history the second time around, but uh, second for the upgraded ward, that's also kind of cool. Slate problem. Apparently the ward requires 90 smithing and 90 prayer in order to make. I can pay the dude in Edgeville to dismantle my arcane spirit shield into the sigil, which I need to upgrade the ward, but he can't actually build it for you. And if you take a look at my stats, well, I can plus five boost in smithing, but I'm also 85 prayer. But what I think I could probably do, hopefully, is Ancient Mace up to 90 prayer and then get a plus five boost for smithing. And together, I'm hoping that I'll be able to upgrade the ward. I don't know for sure, so this is going to be a little bit of an experiment, but I'm going to give it a shot. Step one here, I need to get the prayer boost from the Ancient Mace, and I believe all I have to do is spec a man and it should boost up. Okay, so we got the 92 there, just have to make sure not to use any prayer. And now for the always fun process of trying to get a plus five smithing boost. You know, just a bit ago, I was thinking to myself, I have made a lot of raw GP from doing TOA, and that was super nice. And now I'm about to blow all of it and then some more on buying the 10,000 soul runes so that I can upgrade this thing. 10k soul runes have been secured, and now the part that's going to be a little bit bittersweet I have to dismantle my arcane spirit shield, and I know it's going to a good home, it's going to a good place here, but uh, yeah, this has been a really cool item to have, and it is going to suck dismantling this, but it has to be done. Uh, is it, Wait, is this even the right guy? Hang on. All right, I believe it, this is the correct gentleman here, Abbot Langley. Can you help me out with spirit shields? Are you sure? I suppose so, sir. And there's the Arcane Sigil, which leaves us with one item left on the to-do list, getting the plus five boost. There's the 90 we were looking for. All right, let's make this thing. Consume 10k soul runes to fortify Elodinus's ward, yes. Even got a little animation, and we have created the upgraded ward. Let's throw on this bad boy. Oh yeah, that looks really cool, and let's check out the bonuses here. Um, taking it off, you can see that there is, where am I, why am I missing this here? Uh, there's no magic damage bonus, but when I slap it back on, you have the 5% magic damage bonus and all the bonuses of the arcane spirit shield. It's also a plus 2% magic damage bonus over the uncharged variation. I'm super excited to try this bad boy out. No purple on number 50, but that does put me on the high scores. I'll throw up a screenshot of whatever rank I am right now. I can tell you I'm not one of the first UIM to 50kc. A lot of sweaty UIMs grinding this thing, man. They're hitting it hard. I just can't keep up. Um, but it does feel good to hit the big 50. We made a lot of progress on the bag value this episode, and there's more where that came from. I've got some new unique Iron Man videos, interviews, and more endgame UIM content coming your way, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to drop a like on the way out. Thank you so much for watching.